good evening good morning during the day during the night depending on where you are watching from we want to welcome you on board and i want to say that this is surely the day that the lord has made we are happy that uh, we are in the month of october we've continued to say that this is a month of great uh, recovery and we have that conviction and we are believing God even for your recovery. This particular moment, this our Wednesday, remember this is empowerment ministry. It is the word of the season where we say raising life to real meaning. And this is where we fellowship and we keep saying, please join. And as you join, please share with another person. Let your friends, let your family fellowship with us. This is a ministry of the word, getting you right where you are. And we are so privileged, we are happy and we thank God that even as we come together, we have a topic I want to begin a series. Um, this is where I will be checking so much on matters of the presence of God. I want us to pray and then I introduce the topic. We read the scriptures and then we cruise through this wonderful stuff that God has given us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for the moment you have allowed us to be alive and operating in this world where God you've placed us for a purpose. I want to thank you God Almighty because this particular moment my viewer, my listener, oh God needs you just like I need you. Father, we desire to fellowship and we pray that the Holy Spirit will reveal the will that you have in your heart concerning us, O oh, our Father. And in the name of Jesus, we desire, Father, to rise and God Almighty to serve the purpose for which we were born. God, I thank and I speak life, I speak hope, I speak peace, I speak your grace to every single soul that is in fellowship with me. And this is my prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to read the scriptures in the book of Psalm chapter number 27. I will read three verses, verse 4, 5, and 6. My topic uh, today, um, I've named it, I've entitled uh, this topic, or this message rather, I am okay with him. I am okay with him. And when we say that I am okay with him, I want to assure you that there are things that are hidden in this statement. We want to see things like we find in the scriptures. And let's start from Psalms 27 verse 4 to 6. This is what the Bible says. One thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the sacred place, of his tabernacle. He shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Amen. So I'm saying that I am okay with him. This statement alone and this topic or the title 
it is not a statement of opinions and options. It is where there is certainty and there is contentment. When somebody says, I'm okay, it's not that because there was another alternative only, but this is where you find the whole heart given to something and the comfort and the goodness thereof satisfy the person. So, I want you to see that we want to look so much into the presence of the Lord. I see the man of God, David. This is the psalm of David. You remember David had an experience in his life. The, the Janos that he wrote every single moment that he had time to write, you can tell. When you read through Psalms, you discover for sure there was a great, great experience. But there's something so sweet. After he said so many things that you know, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? He comes now to this statement where he says that one thing I have desired of the Lord one thing I have desired of the Lord that will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. Now it is it is it is good to understand that in the temple in the house of God where David desired to dwell, there must be reasons and there are quite a number. But let's look at this. When he says one thing, that means there could have been many other things. But David decides to say this one thing. I may miss all others, but this one I won't miss. This one I'm not going to release. This one I'll hold on to. And this is one thing he says I've desired it is to seek or to be in the house of the Lord. Let me take you farther and progress in this one verse. That uh, if you love something, if you need something, you find the necessity of something, you definitely seek that thing. So this man of God, David, was seeking. He says, one thing I desire, and this is what I seek. Because there is the desire in the heart. He had to seek that thing. In other words, he had, he had to fight. He had to make sure that he is in the house of the Lord. He is in the dwelling place of the Lord. He is taking a refuge in the presence of the Lord. I want to call upon you, my viewer, my listener, that you make it a desire. I've observed many places where people have lived like they are okay, even without the simplest step of going to church, being in the house of God. I've seen people who assume it is okay that you have the day of worship, your Sabbath day, and you can dare sleep the whole day. You can dare go partying and merrymaking uh, during that particular day because your boss, your employer, does not demand your time and your presence. I'm here asking you, my friend, make it a desire that you want to be in the presence of the Lord. Literally, being in the worship place. You don't need to tell anybody that you are so engaged, you are so busy. If God did not become so busy for you, that he created the opportunity, his presence, and especially giving us his only son, in whom the whole deity of God is found, in him, in Christ Christ, 
the whole presence of God is found. If God did not spare his own son uh, to give us a refuge, to give us a dwelling, to give us a presence, who are you? And that's why I want us to, uh, to, to emulate David saying, one thing I have desired of him. One thing I have desired. Okay, as you do so many other things from your day one to day six, why don't you also do this one thing in your day seven? That one alone. Let's go to other things. Being okay with him, it means even the one day to all the days of your life. You can be in the physical and in the spiritual, in the emotions, in your mental life. You can afford to hold on uh, to his presence. And it's important to say among many things that David would have loved from the Lord. Maybe he would have loved to be blessed like many people of our days, we desire the blessings of the Lord. We are moving up and down looking for miracles. We want to be blessed of the Lord. But David said, among many things, this one thing I've desired. In other words, I better miss all others, but this one I don't want to miss. He desired to dwell in the house of the Lord. David is not talking about a technically appearing in the house of God. Let me pause there and ask a few questions. How do you handle the presence of God? How do you handle the house of God? How do you handle where God wants to meet with you? Are you neat? Are you neatly, you know, connected? you know, intertwined with that desire of being in the house of the Lord. Another question I want to ask, how peaceful, how comfortable, how restful are you when the Lord needs you in his presence? It could be physically in the church, in the house of God, or you could be needed in the word of God, in prayer, in meditation, in your solitude, where we say you have your quiet place. May God have mercy upon us. We are living in the era of a lot of busyness, moving up and down. You have all things to do. You are demanded. Actually, there are voices demanding. We have so many voices that are bossing around us. They are demanding us. They are giving us orders. You hear your room is talking, needing this and the other. You hear your environment. You go to your closet and you fight concerning your clothing. It's like there are voices telling you, you need to renew. There are so many demands. When you get out, you find your head is carrying so much a lot of concentration if you are driving there's so much you are seeing around and you find like life is taken away carried away by all manner of issues and matters and affairs my friend my brother my sister listen and listen to me good you need to cultivate the desire why? It is in the presence of the Lord. It is in the dwelling of the Lord where you regain your strength. That is where you retreat for strength, for power, for renewal, for refueling. That's why David said, one thing I desire of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. It is good to know. When David is talking of this. He is an example. We have seen him as an example. And a great one. If you go through 
the book of Psalms and even as some praises and thanksgiving uh, songs that he sang in the book of Samuel, you discover this man was really a man after God's heart. Just like God had spoken about him, I have found a man, David, a man in the house of Jesse. He, God said, I found a man after my own heart. In other words, if you look at that, you see the connection between the heart of David and the heart of God. There was that indwelling. There was that root that David is penetrating, assessing the heart of God. And God is also assessing the heart of David. It is not easy. It's not possible if there is no desire. If you are not passionately releasing your heart to have that communion and that fellowship with God. Look at this. You see uh, David saying this, there's something important I'm seeing here, is that there are things he will discover in the house of the Lord. What do you fight? When you go to the house of the Lord, according to this text, you discover number one, you will meet his presence. And I would say this, if you don't start with getting his presence, then even you are getting into his house might not benefit. It could be in vain. And there's something I would wish to state here, that his presence is number one. I may get to his house and fight so many things, a beauty of his house, beauty of so many other things. But what I need first is him. Actually, I am okay with him. That's my topic today. I am okay with him. So if I find his presence, then I'll be contented. I'll be comfortable. Many are the benefits when you have him, even before you have his. Whatever he has may come second, but whatever he is, that's what we need. So in his house, we find his presence. You see, look at this, that he says, you know, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. To behold the beauty of the Lord. Not the beauty of his blessings. Not the beauty of his properties. Not even the beauty of what surrounds him. It is the beauty of the Lord. Look at this, admiration. David is saying, when I'm there, oh yes, I will gaze at the beauty. I will behold the splendor of the Lord himself. It's good, his presence. So in his house and temple, we find his presence. I want to major on that. With all you are getting, my dear one, I get his presence. With all you are getting, and especially nowadays, these are the last days, I won't hide you. We are seeing the competitiveness of the world we are living in. All manner of civilization and, and all manner of uh, technology, and so many things, and even all manner of evils that have attacked the world today. These are signs that we need to be worried of something. You need to be worried of missing the presence of God. And here I'm telling you, David is an example. He's telling us that. And you fight with all you are getting. I repeat, get God's presence. In other words, before you look for his properties, I know even in prayers, is that spirit you find you want to compete because you saw your brother, your sister, you know, having this or the other. You find your prayers are tempted, even not 
to gaze and to look at the beauty of the Lord. You are even tempted not to worship. You are tempted just to demand, asking God, give me this, give me the other. Check how we are living and you find there's something amiss. If we are missing the presence of God, if I cannot be okay with him, even when I don't see any other thing, then I'm in trouble. I need him. I love the singer who said, yes, I need him every hour. I need you every hour. Yes, I need you. And it's important to see that he or who he is matters. He, he matters more than what he has. And I've seen God relating with many people from that point of view. That when he comes, you discover the rest will start falling in place. So many things will fall in place. Talk of battles you are fighting. If the Lord came through for you, you'll discover even that battle is nothing. Because the battle is the Lord. That is the Bible. The word of God. And having a fellowship with someone, you should know it supersedes even having a fellowship with what he has. Let me give an example. If you came to my house, and then I prepared a very good dinner and I kept it on the dining table and immediately you start serving, I quit and you see me no more. I'm telling you by the time you are taking that piece of the meal, before you take a few pieces of the items, the ingredients, you start getting worried. Because what I have was not really what you needed. You needed me. You needed my presence. And who knows? That could be the reason why one time when Jesus visited, I will come to that maybe one of these fine days. But let me just touch on it. You remember Jesus visiting Bethany. And he came to the house of Mother and Mary. But the Bible records that Mother started complaining and saying, Why don't you tell my sister Mary to be concerned, to come and serve, to assist me in preparation of this meal? But Jesus looked at Mother and said, You have bothered yourself with many things. Only one thing is needed. Only one thing is needed. Do you see the same word with David? One thing I have desired of the Lord. Jesus told mother, only one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen the best thing. And nobody can snatch it from her. Look at the conviction of the words of Jesus. What is that Mary had chosen? Mary had chosen to stick at the feet of Jesus. Because when Martha is busy preparing and doing things, Mary chose the best part of service, the best part to dwell. And that is the presence of the master. I'm here saying with him, I am okay. Look at this. If you compare, like I've said, Martha and Mary, you see, the one who is in good record. Even one time Jesus said, wherever this gospel shall be preached, Mary shall be mentioned. Because the moment you abide in his presence, and the moment you connect with the God, remember, a God desires your fellowship. A God also is happy. You know, when you hear he dwells in the midst of the praise of his people, that's a sign that God is so sure. God, the God of Israel, our God that we praise, that we pray to, this God is so sure. 
and is looking for that fellowship. David knew that when you get him, then you get everything else that you need. When you get him, you get everything else that you need. Can I ask you to remember the life of Mr. and Mrs. Adam, the first man, the first woman ever lived on earth, created by God. You know, they were okay as long as they had him. He used to visit in the cool of the day. That's around the 3 p.m. when we talk of the cool of the day. That could be the East African time, the 3 p.m. It's actually the evening hour of sacrifices that the Bible has mentioned many times with Elijah. Even the hour Paul and Silas were looking for a place of prayer where they were fellowshipping and meeting people like Lydia. This is also what you find in Acts chapter 3 when Peter and John are going to the house of prayer at the gate called beautiful. You know what happened? The hour, that hour, the hour of fellowship, God loved it. And he used to visit Adam and Eve. And you see, in that coolness of time, one time in John, that is Genesis chapter number 3, if you look at verse 9, you see what is happening. Because when God came as usual, he did not find them. Where were they? I remember, they had been taken out of his presence by loving and desiring his property. Remember, it is when Eve saw that the fruit that was forbidden, when she saw that it was nice, it was good looking, and it was good to help somebody to be wise according to the deception of the serpent. She took it and gave another one to her husband. What happened is, the moment they took, the moment they were manipulated by the desire of the things in the estate, instead of being influenced to hold on to the presence of the owner of the estate, the creator of the estate, they missed the mark. And that's how they left the presence of God. You know the story very well, but verse 9 of Genesis 3, that's where you find, then the Lord God called to Adam, saying, where are you? That is not just a question. When you hear God has come in the field, and the question is, Adam, where are you? I may ask myself a question. I ask you, my viewer, my listener. Why is God asking that? And we know nothing is hidden before his eyes. He sees everything. Why is he asking Adam, where are you? Really? Is it true that he was not seeing him? Physically, Adam was present. But in the presence of God, spiritually, where they used to meet with the God, in the connecting ground, Adam was normal. And, uh, you know, the story it continued because Adam started saying, you know, the woman you give me, blah, 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 give me this. And the story went on, but nothing was salvaged. Because Adam and Eve had to be kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Why? Because the moment you miss in his presence, be ready for anything. And that's why I'm saying, with all you are getting, get his presence. And I'll keep saying that I am okay with him. 
I may miss many other things. I don't mean that I'm uh, preaching to you as like a prophet of doom, <clears throat> that you don't gain, that you don't get prosperity. I know there is that gospel of prosperity and uh, where we need, you know, to gain and all this. I'm also there sometimes as I speak about a recovering even our economy and everything. It is true because that is in God's will. But first and foremost, can we desire his presence? Let's not be kicked out technically by failing to behold, by failing to you know, to, to hold on to the presence of the Lord. We also remember somebody by the name Moses. When you look at Exodus chapter 33, Exodus 33, I'm happy to mention that uh, Moses is another humble man of God. You remember God gave his testimony when he told Miriam and Aaron, that your brother, though the youngest, the last born, your brother, we normally speak with him face to face. Others, other prophets, I speak to them through visions and dreams. But this one, we speak face to face. What does that mean? He was in the presence of the Lord. If you recall the record and the life of Moses, even the time he got so much perturbed by the discouragement coming from the people, their stubbornness, their, their disobedience. But he went up the mountain to the presence of the Lord. And this is telling you that Moses knew how to cultivate, how to retreat and get the power and the presence of the Lord. So you find him in Exodus chapter number uh, 35, starting from verse 15. There is something unique. Uh, Moses says, if your presence does not walk with us, if your presence does not uh, go with us, do not bring us up uh, from here. That statement is a uh, a pregnant with information. Why? Because if he says, if your presence does not go with us, what does that mean? Moses is aware that the far we have come up to here, your presence has been with us. So the moment he is now imagining that they can start moving again, moving ahead without God, he tells God, if your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Once again, I want to state here that you better be down where God is than go up if he is not there. You may climb the ladder the ladder of success you may go high but if you are going without god i have one question for you my friend who will sustain you up there remember they say in geography that the higher you go the cooler it becomes and somebody else said that the ladder of success is never crowded at the top. You are going towards a loneliness, but you need God. If God is there, if you hold on to God, if you surrender to him, and you make him your companion, then it shall be well. Moses says, dare us not to move up from here. If you are not going with us, if your presence does not go with us. He felt Canaan, as much as God talked about Canaan, the promised land, even as uh, spies could bring reports 
and see how things are. It is a good land. There is milk, there is honey, there are fruits. We have seen Moses felt a canon without God is worse than the wilderness with God. And God's assurance in the other verse, going back to verse 14, still in Exodus 34, you see something very important. God is assuring Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. My presence will go with you. And in the package of my presence, there is a rest. Did you know that the people who walk in the presence of God, when God is available in your life, when you are fully assured that you are not alone, you are not just with the people, you are also with the God. Did you know there is a lot of rest? This calmness, when you know he is on your side, like we know Romans uh, chapter 8 when Paul says, if God is on our side, who can be against us? That is an assurance of rest. I'm okay with him. If he is in, then I'm okay. Tell me to go anywhere, but he must be there. Where whichever direction, if God is there, then I'm okay. I'm comfortable. Oh, hallelujah. That reminds me, when you find that rest, then it shows very clearly how consolation it is, how consoling it is, even when there is trouble and God is in place. I go again to Psalms 84. Let me look at this. Psalms 84 and verse 10. Let's look at that. And I read, For a day in your court is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. That's another comparison, a powerful one. Comparing the courts of the Lord, the house of God, the estate of the Lord, dwelling there a single day, it is better than a thousand days elsewhere. And he compares saying that I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord and then a dwell in the tent of wickedness. Look at another major comparison. When you talk of God's presence, he talks of the house. When you talk of wickedness, you talk of a tent. So you can see the house has some permanence. The tents are temporary. And so you find when you want just to dwell in wickedness, did you know you'll stay in very temporal places? It is not even satisfying. It could be the pleasure that is calling you there. But as long as it is in wickedness, those are just tents and anything can destroy them together with you. There is no safety. There is no security in the tent of wickedness. But in the house of the Lord, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. What does that mean? When you are a doorkeeper of any house, of any estate, you are no longer outside. Doorkeeping is done from the inside. I've never visited any estate, I've never visited any home, and then I find the gate man, the watchman, the security call outside. <clears throat> they normally ask me, who are you, when they are already inside. So when you are a doorkeeper, you are within. You may not go to the sitting room, you may not be allowed even uh, to be in the, in the bedroom, 
but you are inside. That's a good thing. I better be a doorkeeper. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. So in the presence of God, let me be there inside. The rest will be sorted out. But being outside in the tent of wickedness, you'll be in trouble. You are heading nowhere. You will not have safety. I repeat, for a day in the courts of the Lord is better. One day is better than a thousand elsewhere. Let me talk to you people, and especially young people. I know you are living in a time when a lot of pleasure, wickedness, evil, calling all over, whereby you find that you are okay, you, you are carried away by your own self, and you feel you want to be interacting with the whoever, with the friends. You want to be found here and there. You want to move. You want to be found in all manner of indulgence, of wickedness. I ask you in the name of Jesus, consider this one thing. That even if you are given a thousand days in wickedness, you end up a loser comparing with one who had only a single day in the presence of the Lord. I say this with a lot of attachment because I love you. I need you to change. I need you to transform. I need you to raise your life to a real meaning. You need to have your real purpose that God uh, brought you here for. And his presence, I've come to realize that his presence will attract everything else that I need. That's a good thing about it. I have never seen any person, maybe, let me, let me say this. You'll never be in the presence of a great person, a wealthy person, a generous person, a person of substance and quality and then you lack what you need and that is number two I said in his dwelling you find number one presence get it get his presence get him hold him then number two you will find in his dwelling there is provision I want to touch on this I may have mentioned some of these things in many other subjects but I'm convinced and convicted that especially now the days are remaining before we close the year let's live in style this style of being okay with him let him be there do not be like some people who feel uncomfortable when he is mentioned. Yes, I've visited some Christians who intermingle so much with worldly people, all manner of people. And the moment you want to show like you want to praise God with them and you find like they are scared, they are not very comfortable. They are not, you know, outgoing in the matters of faith because they do not value they do not embrace his presence. When you love him, when you are with him, you will never be shy of him. You will not be ashamed. Jesus said, whoever will be ashamed of me, here on earth, I also be ashamed to talk about him in heaven. Now, number two, I've said, you fight provision. I have no doubt about the provision of God when we dwell in his presence. Let me ask you this question. If you went to the presence of the king of the land, how would you behave? I said some scriptures, I'll be throwing them even in this series, other days to come. But you one time discover, and if you look at the Bible, 
the writer of Proverbs, you find him saying, do not be in haste when you get to the presence of a king. If you are dining, if you are eating with a king, don't be in a hurry. That is God's word. And importantly to mention, there is provision. So when you see that, you find the king is associated with the feasting. Kings are associated <coughs> with generosity. There is always the generous uh, hand of royalty. In the royal family, when you go to any royal family where there is the king, you discover there is the spirit of generosity. And it is nature. It is actually a demand. It's one of the qualifications of a king. And when you go there, how do you behave? Would you just look at him and then you don't take whatever he provides to you? No. When you are with him, he extends his hand of grace, his hand of generosity. Then you become a beneficiary. Wonderful. Wonderful. Look at this. I've always had people who ever visited the president of the Lord, I've always heard them saying how generous the moment was, the feasting, the eating. Others are given uh, money to go eating along the way. Why? Because of that generosity. And that's why I keep saying, if you have him, then automatically you start getting what he has his person ahead, then his possession will touch your life. And that's why the kingdom of God, I want you to see here, when we are calling on the name of the Lord, when we want to be in his presence, we seek his kingdom, thy kingdom come, you know, thy will be done as it is done in heaven. Let it be done here. Why? Because when you are inviting that kingdom, it has the key. And this is why I say you fight the, the affluence, you fight uh, the splendor of the kingdom uh, because of the king when he is there. I've said many times if the president decided to visit you, you could be a very common man a villager. But if the king of your land decides to visit you, you can imagine what will happen. His government, his kingdom must make sure things are in order. You'd start finding the things that have never been in that village, they are already put in place. Because kings are not associated with embarrassment. So you find the whole kingdom is coming your way. You get a lot of things courtesy of his coming, courtesy of his presence. You'll find all manner of food, all manner of feasting because he is coming. He will meet the bill. Oh yes, you get it there. I'm, I'm, I'm told of a story of a, a, a very senior person who ever lived in this country. And uh, when his son decided to get married, the son chose a girl of a peasant, a girl of a poor family. And uh, when it was discovered that the boy was not turning back, he needed that girl. What happened is this girl's home Things were in a total mess. The house was a leaky. There was no road leading to the house. But uh, now the rich man had to prepare for his son uh, to go, you know, and give dowry and visit the poor family of this girl. I'm told, because it's a true case, I'm told that within 
uh, six months of preparation. Uh, the house was different in that home. It had been constructed. Everything had been done in order. The road had been made to that house. The fencing and the gates and uh, so many other things that uh, took place. I also understand when a food was taken, it's like it was transported in a lorry or in lorries, <clears throat> and the food was taken outside Kittery from the hotels uh, to this girl's home. People of the village had to come and feast and eat and you can also imagine uh, the envelope of the dowry and all these other things that have been done and on whose bill everything is done and paid for by uh, the father of the son, the rich uh, family. What am I saying? <clears throat> you fight a lot of things when there is that kind of relationship. And what triggered all this? It is the girl and the young man having that relationship. So the presence of the rich family was felt in the village, was felt in the family of the poor the girl. I want to say this. When you look at God, the moment you say yes to him, the moment you are approached by his son, Jesus Christ, for marriage, and you say yes, then I tell you, you start now seeing things coming in this manner, in this form. And you see, even not only yourself, but also your entire family will, will taste uh, the benefits of his presence. You start finding people quoting around you, people happy with you and enjoying. You are able to touch other lives because you have connected with his presence. And that's why I say there is provision in the house of the Lord, in his presence. And that's why you find Psalm 16. Let me quote this, Psalm 16. And verse number 11, uh, Psalm 16 and verse 11, you will show me the path of life. Psalm 16 verse 11, you will show me uh, the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your presence is fullness of joy. Mm. At your right hand, are pleasures forevermore. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Let me challenge some people who think there is no pleasure, there is no happiness in the presence of the Lord. Many people have even attacked the born again, the converted, the saved men and women and claiming that there is no joy. Yes, even in the court of the young people, you fight when one gives his life to Christ. I remember I faced wrath also from my age when I gave my life to Christ at age 19. And they started telling me now, what has happened? You are now leaving us. You know, you are now going to the primitive age of the old women carrying Bibles uh, to church and you know you are a very good break dancer. You are our star. Where have you gone? Look at this. But let me tell you, in the presence of the Lord, you'll find there is also pleasure. Uh, there is joy. Yes, you are peaceful. You can compare. Let's compare. Supposing I spared the whole night in church praising and praying and somebody else spends the whole night in a bar taking alcohol 
and all manner of commotion there and the noise. I want you to check on the two of us. Let's check on our hangovers. How will be that one of the drunkard and the one, the hangover that I could be having? Mine is holy. Mine will be good. Mine will be even when I go to sleep, I'll have the holy sleep because I've enjoyed the presence of the Lord. My dear ones, there is pleasure in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. And I, 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 I will not hide, but I said one time uh, this statement, that if pleasure is going where I'll make losses, where I'll make losses, then I need to think again whether I am okay or I'm foolish. If I get to spend, and I keep asking my dear people, my friends, those that are so happy, you know, in Akko and all this, if you cannot buy those three, four bottles and take it home and you call everybody, including your children, to come and you enjoy it together. If you can't do that, then think again what you are doing. You are not sensible enough. If you are making losses in the name of pleasure and you are seeing it, you need to turn around and say, no, I better get him. Let me get the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is why I say, I am okay with him. You may see me different from you. You may see a Christian looking different, even managing time differently, and getting home early, when others want to get home very late in all manner of pleasure and wickedness, I want to tell you we have pleasure forevermore in the presence of the Lord. I said something that there is a lot of provision. Those who have studied with me the book of Esther, we did it. You go again and check because you find chapter 1 of Esther when the king Ahasuerus had the party for 180 days and then continued seven more days. The Bible records that every other ingredient of meals and party and food was there. And there was a lot of merrymaking. It was a party. I'm giving this as an example that everyone mostly in verse 7 and 8, I'm just mentioning this, Esther chapter 1, and that this king commanded the officials to allow everybody who was there uh, to eat and drink and have pleasure with no limitation. You take as much as you can. That's a sign of abundance. The provision of a king is in abundance. I would hate to imagine that you visit a king and after you have eaten and you are not satisfied, there is no more. There must be more than enough. And prophetically, I declare to you who have desired to seek and the presence of the Lord, you have desired to follow God, to walk with Him. May you enjoy abundance of provision. May you enjoy the provision of the King of Kings. Let you be in the light of more than enough. This is where I say it's the promised land. When the children of Israel were in Egypt suffering, they were in the lot of less than enough. When they came to the wilderness, they started receiving manna. And it was enough for that day. So they were in the wilderness, the lot and the stage of just but enough. When they crossed over Jordan and they went to the lot of Canaan, 
after beating Jericho, you know, they discovered before before even they they beat uh, Jericho, you know, the time of circumcision of this man, they found abundance. They found corn. They found food. There was a harvest. They did not need to pick only for a day. That was Canaan, the promised land, the land of more than enough. I repeat, Egypt, the land of less than enough. A wilderness, the land of just but enough. And Canaan, the land of more than enough. I'm saying this, in the presence of God, there is more than enough. We enjoy it to the fullness. And I declare, call it healing. May it come in fullness. Whatever you are asking God for, once you abide in his presence, may God fulfill his promise, his word. May he enrich you. Hallelujah. And this is important because personally I'm a witness. And uh, as I come to the close of this sermon, I want to tell you I'm a witness. Uh, part of my life when I was here, after I gave my life to Christ and then I joined uh, the teaching uh, uh, profession and I was through with the training that particular stage, I remember by the time I was getting posted, I had told God, give me a posting that will put me not where I'll be tied because I want to serve you. I had already made a decision that I want to serve God. So what happened is, the first posting where I was posted, I don't want to mention names, but many of my followers would tell, I used to find, because now I'm not at home, I'm not engaged by my parents, I'm now staying in a rental house, I could find that free time to go for God, to preach, to pray, to seek the Lord, to worship. And as I continued, I found any opportunity to go out, even to share the word of God. I saw it associated with so many benefits. I remember the estate where I had rented my my room and uh, there were so many other uh, teachers <clears throat> other people other professionals in the same estate but i used to wonder what was happening with me and i remember i would go out for missions sometimes i would go for a weekend challenge in a high school that is friday evening after work and I'll come back on Monday morning. The whole weekend I'm out, you know, doing work for ministry. This is what used to happen. I could come back that early morning on Monday and find some containers outside my house. I could find one container has maize, you know, corn is there. Another container has peas or the green uh, uh, beans I would fight uh, milk and then my my work was just to receive in and I would pour like potatoes on a corner uh, the mejis, the peas I'm talking about and maize and what used to happen is because I'm all alone I could not finish all this but the question was where were they coming from where are these uh, properties coming from? Only to find that I'm in class and a child comes telling me, you know, I was told by mama that I go with the container in the evening. Then the question is, who is your mama? Where do you come from? Then I would identify. And so many identified with me because of sometimes I would go where families are mourning they are dead and i'll get a chance to share just to encourage them just to see words of hope to them and that's how they got to know me so what happened is because i'm all alone 
<clears throat> this time I'm a bachelor, I would call my neighbors, I would call colleagues, and I would distribute that food uh, to them. Because I know coming weekend again, I'll be out. What am I trying to show you? The moment you connect with the God in his presence, in his work, serving him, you'll not lack. God is faithful to his word. And imagine a bachelor having no lad. I'm not a farmer. And then I became a distributor of food, receiving from well-wishers and receiving from the recipient of the word that I preached. And then I'm distributing to other uh, neighbors, to my colleagues. To me, that's, it's, it looks a mystery, but it's an answer to the question, can I be okay? just with him. I tell you, I am okay with him. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And finally, as I close, I won't leave this one behind. It has been said many times, those who know our first president of this country, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta, this is a man <coughs> who found this country, fought for independence. But he visited one high school, one high school in Kenya. And it was funny because just like a king or a leader visits a place, you know how uh, he is received. There are people lining up to greet him. And it happened that a boy who was in Form 3, managed to squeeze his heart between two senior people. So as the president was greeting every person, he also greeted and shook heart of this boy. And even the principal who was introducing them was almost confused, but he had to cheat and say, and that one is, uh, is the captain. You know something like that but that's not the end of the story because after that <clears throat> after the function this boy was noted by people by the teachers by everybody it was not a punishable a crime it was even something that made fun in the school but the funny thing for two weeks this boy was keeping his heart right hand in the pocket. He was telling everyone, I can't greet you easily because the heart greeted the president. You can imagine the joy of touching the great man of the land, the highest authority of the country. So the boy used to, even when walking, the heart was in the pocket and everybody could identify that this is the boy who greeted the president. What a joy. If that can happen, to the physical heart, touching the king. Why don't you desire that you may connect with him, that you may shake hearts with him? May the Lord bless you. And as I close, I tell you, God loves you and we need to seek his presence. One thing I desire of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I am okay with him. Let's close. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for the opportunity of sharing your word. And I pray that to make this word a real, active, powerful, and effective in our lives. I declare in the name of Jesus, that my viewers are going to enjoy the presence of God. I call for those who are not born again to give their lives to Christ. I declare a connection, a network with God. Father, we desire that even to dwell in your house, rather than being in the tent of wickedness, 
Give us victory. Give us the desire. We desire this, O oh God, that even in our nations we'll find the desire of many turning unto God. This is my prayer. Father, I give you praise. May your provision be real to us. May your provision in your presence encourage your people. Provide healing to the sick. My God, provide daily bread to the hungry. Provide Jehovah God. Even peace to the peaceless. Provide hope to the hopeless. My Lord and my God, I call on you at this particular hour believing that you are touching us, our families, our spouses, our children, even our colleagues, our neighbors. I declare in Jesus' name, even touching our government, may the government of our nations desire the presence of the Lord. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. I encourage you again uh, to do your giving and your tithing. When you count your blessings, uh, remember you've been permitted by God to do work. You've been allowed by God to operate, to occupy in your business, in your work. Please do not mess your income. Don't mess your economy by failing to pay your tithes. And be generous in giving. As you excel in all other things and all other fields, please excel in the grace of giving. I give you a chance to do so, even to stand with this ministry. And I'm always thankful, and I give God all the glory for you. And I tell you, you are not miserable. Neither shall your breakthroughs be measurable. You are destined for greatness. With him, be okay. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Shalom.